Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. And tonight we'll be looking at a very interesting contemporary topic, workplace bullying and harassment. Workplace bullying and harassment. Our facilitator tonight is a veteran in leadership, management, HR, and corporate governance, among many other things. He's not a stranger to this prestigious platform, Dr. Olufemi Musaku Johnson. However, for the benefit of one or two people who may just be get, getting in contact with him for the first time, I'll read a brief profile of his. Dr. Olufemi Musaku Johnson is a major corporate governance, learning, and innovative business expert in Nigeria. He is the founder and pioneer registrar, CEO, Association of Corporate Governance Professionals of Nigeria, is the chairman, Euro Advisory and Governance Service, is a graduate of public administration and has a master's degree in personal psychology from UNAD and a PhD in organizational leadership from NWU Florida, USA. He is also a charter secretary and administrator a chartered management practitioner, a chartered personnel management practitioner. He has work experience accumulating in a successful tenure for 10 years with Law Union and Rock PLC, eight years in Lagos State Public Service Development Center, five years at the Institute of Nigerian Institute of Management. He subsequently moved to the Institute of Directors, Nigeria, where he pioneered and led the director's development department with triple A rated director's learning in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom. He's a member of the board of trustees and secretary of the International Aeronautics College. He's also secretary to the board, Medical Ethics and Governance Initiative, board member, Foundation for Value Transformation. In addition to this, he is a committee member, Lagos, State Post Service Welfare Council. Also, he's an examiner at the Charter Institute of Bankers and Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administration, ICSA. He is an IFC certified corporate governance board leadership trainer and also Center for Management Development accredited trainer. He's an alumnus of the prestigious Lagos Business School where he, he was a member of the Media and Communication School at LBS. He is, is a published author, and importantly, with due respect, a paramount, a member of the Paramount Ruling House of Aguda, Ogba, Lagos, and happily married with children. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's welcome with all the warmth and applause, all the virtual emojis, emoticons we can access tonight, Dr. Olufemi. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm very glad to be in, in this particular bit this evening. It's a very, very important program. It's a very, very important and it offers to a very, very important topic. As a matter of fact, I'm not really happy anytime work, uh, workplace bullying and harassment anywhere. As a matter of fact, I used to joke with my friends that if I hear that the place that anybody is harassed, if I don't have the chance to the place, does not. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. It's a very, very bad news. And we have it all over the place. Up till this evening, I was still reading uh, in, uh, some of the news. Precisely, Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka, some lecturers have been sus suspended for harassing. In fact, one was a, a female student. You know, all manners of issues. Some, three lecturers, I have their names here. They were collecting money from, to pass them in exam. 
huge amount of money. You hear all kinds of issues like this and you are not basically happy. And it, it happens everywhere. I'm surprised when I go to Ghana, I learned that this kind of a thing usually happens. I had the program like this. It's Africa-wide program. And in Zimbabwe, in uh, Namibia, in Kenya, I had the report that this kind of situation happens. It means it happens everywhere. UK, US is not excluded and so on. So what is what, what are we trying to look at and what is the objective of this? Uh, session, this, uh, we are going to define every employee to know they have a right. We look at that. To know the different type types of harassment, to understand what to do when harassment occurs and the responsibilities of supervisors, then how do you also protect yourself? This is very, very important. But I must say before we go on that, we have zero tolerance for harassment, for bullying, and it is. We don't want to see it. We don't want to hear it. And it is very, very important that people join hands with us to ensure that this is obliterated from our society. So first we start with sexually unwell act. You can see unwell act. Objectiveness impact, not the intent, intent that matters. But it's basically unwelcome act. It is act that is not a thing that somebody invites. So it is very, very important that we look at it as something that is dangerous if it is unwelcome. So we, we look at that. Then it includes what are the components of it. It includes physical contact, abusive sounds, abusive languages, abusive vituperations, making sexually colored remarks, sexually you know, you are saying, I, 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 I your house, this, this, this was, was incredibly, uh, not basically welcome. Using sexually abusive languages, Vulgar in the place and so was supposed to be a response comes with all kinds of indecent jokes, sexual jokes, and so on. I had to go there and stop it. And I told him that if you don't stop, then I have to take it up. Somebody that I'm talking about is the HR manager of the place. He's a close person to me. And basically, I think he's respected in the religious circle. And I told him, and I said, this is the last time I will hear that kind of language, indecent jokes in this organization. As far as I'm in that, physical confinement or touches that is against the will and likely to intrude upon the privacy of another person, demand or request for favors that are related to sex. So all these are very, very critical issues that everybody must be uh, aware of. Then it also includes implied or implicit, explicit promise of pre preferential treatment. All right, you know, you can just ask somebody, okay, I'm going to promote you if you allow, if you do this and so on, you are going to get some uh, advantages over all that so on. So another one is implied or, or explicit threatening treatments. Threatening meeting it demands threats about present and future employment status 
and premises. Yes, hostile work environment. All of us have had cause to work in an hostile environment. I'm going to give some examples of some of these. Interference with work, humiliating treatment, likely to affect our health or safety, whoever is or health or safety. These are some of the things I have exposed how we are able to overcome it in workspace and in work environments. So uh, these are some of the pictures that relates to, to that creating or do we want to pass somebody just uh, stop somebody touches any unwelcome act. These are some of the acts and so on. I'm sure you can see some of the acts. I'm sure some of them you can be able to see it. And I want to say that sexual harassment is not a woman's thing. It's not issue that relates to women alone. It's everybody. It's not a passing fault. It's, it, it's not something that, oh, it used to happen. Oh, it, 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 it's not today. It has been happening over billions of years. It's not something to joke about. It's not something to be ignored. It's a cause for paranoia and fear. And also we need to find a way to prevent or prohibit it and so on. So this is this is what it is. So uh, cracking jokes, mm, likely to cause awkwardness or embarrassment. All these are also part of it. Gender-based insults or sexist remark are part of it. Using gender-based insults is part of it. Unwelcome sexual overtones in any manner is part of it. Making obscene gestures, using indecent language, part of it. Touching or brushing against any part of the body and the like is part of it. Displaying pornographic pictures, cartoons, pamphlets, or whatever is part of it. Possibly physical touch and molestation is part of it. Physical confinement, standing too close or trying to touch or feel. Abuse of authority or power, it's part of it. Threatening adverse consequences and so on. Now you have a series of issues like this in workplace and I am aware that it's now a commonplace. It involves acts to which the victim has reasonable apprehension that they are being humiliated, that they are unsafe, that they are unhealthy. That they are being discriminated against uh, issues that basically are related to it, all right? Now, what is at stake? What is at stake in this? When this happens, what are the things that are at stake? You have brand value, you have negative publicity. I don't go there. Ah, that manager, that it also uh, causes loss of money for non-compliance of provision of law. When this happens, there can be litigation, people can be sued, and so many things can basically happen that makes it a problem for the organization. These are some of the things that are at stake. So we have talked about what it means and so on. We have talked about what it means, basically unwelcome, unwanted, and it is offensive, something given that is basically interfering with individuals' work performance, creating intimidating, hostile, offensive environments. So a hostile work environment serves no good purpose. And that is what everybody should be able to see. It serves no good purpose. The prevention, the elimination of harassment is everyone's responsibility. And this has happened in my own career. Prevention, because I, I know my duty. It doesn't have to concern me. It doesn't have to affect me. Prevention of this, elimination of it, is basically everyone's responsibility. 
it, you can't say you are not uh, concerned and so on. Uh, I remember I was growing up in an insurance organization and one day my HOD was not available for management meeting. He requested that I should represent him at the management meeting. I got to the meeting. The MD came to the meeting. He was harassing everybody, abusing everybody, cursing everybody. And nobody say anything. And I say, excuse me, sir. I'm sorry. I'm not even supposed to be at this meeting. But may I let you know that what you are doing is uncivilized behavior. May I let you know of your incivility? May I let you know that this hostile uh, attitude is subjecting these people to terrible humiliation? And I told him, I said, look, nobody wants to tell you because they are afraid of their salary. I'm not afraid of my salary. And I'm facing you and I'm telling you face to face that what we are doing is evil. You can continue to do this as long as I'm in this organization. I'm the smallest in this place. I'm the youngest in this place. And I cannot be here and you are doing this. The man stood up. He said, Femi, you can face me. You can say this in my presence. You can do this and so on. He ran away. That was the end of the meeting. When I, <laughs> I left the place, that was the end of the meeting. The meeting is scattered and everything. My boss came back. He said, Femi, I've heard what you did. I've heard that people said that you scattered the meeting. You did this. He said, the man that everybody is afraid of, the man that has juju, the man that has this and that, you fronted the man, this, that, and that. Then later he said, what are you still waiting for? Why don't you pack your things? He's going to sack you. I waited for the sack letter. I didn't see any sack letter. The, uh, two weeks after, I was my office was on the uh, sixth floor. I was going to enter into the lift and I saw the man coming down. And when he saw me, he ran back to where he was coming from. About three months after, I was by the corridor of, and I saw all the HODs. They were discussing. And I heard one of them say that it is Femi that rescued us from this man. This man would have had a lot of us today. This man came to the meeting. We had our business. Everybody contributed and nobody was abused. The man was the head of IT at that time. He was saying that it was Femi that rescued everybody, all the senior people from the harassment of this man. Till I left that place, the man never harassed anybody. But it occurred to me that what the bully wants is confrontation. We are going to discuss some of these issues. Is that the solution? Is that the answer? I don't think that is the answer, but it worked. It made the man to behave normally till I left that place. The man never abused, never acted hostile to any of these senior people anymore. So prevention, elimination of harassment or bullying or whatever, it, it's everyone's responsibility. Don't become the next news story or worse, or the next, the next court case. It is basically something that is very, very serious. And everybody must look at it in that. What are the types of harassment? Sexual harassment, quid pro quo harassment. That person is harassing you by proxy. is harassing you indirectly. Then you have hostile work environment, like the one that I described. You have hostile work environment, then bullying in the workplace, like the one I described. Terrible bullying happened in my presence. Then the third party harassment. This person cannot harass people, but he uses some parties. He uses the senior people. He uses the MD. He uses whoever to harass other people. So you are have that and these are some of the issues that are very very critical i think we've, we've talked about it how common is sexual harassment itself at workplace we are going to go to bullying and see what are some of the connotations of that 52 percent women experience sexual harassment in, in the workplace from research 25 percent touched without invitation 
20% experience sexual and so on. This you see survey. So this is what we get from the from there. Why don't women report? Why don't they report? Why don't they? Because they are the they are the okay. We have the a victim. We have male also that are victim and so on. But of course, majority of the victims are female and so on. So one out of five reported. Eighty percent think outcome is poor. That was the need and so on. Sixteen percent said that the situation worsened after they reported. Even after they reported, the situation I mean got uh, worse and so on. So, and what is the perception of everybody? How do we prevent? So these are some of the issues that are very, very critical. So what are the uh, remedies? What are the remedies? I think that uh, one of the remedies is that somebody that sees something should be able to stand all right. Then another way is for us to take responsibility to inv involve the civil society. In fact, there, are, there is a particular case in Lagos when you have uh, some elements in uh, gray and black that are arresting people at CBDAT, uh, Central Business District of Alausa and its environs. I've gone to Serap. I've gone to Serap. I said we have to work together to stop these people and also to ask the governor, to invite the governor to the court and to ask the governor, Mr. Governor, which law permits this human being to arrest anybody? Which law permits them to wear this uniform? Which law permits them to enter into the vehicle of somebody or uh, pound vehicles of people? For evil to uh, continue, it takes good men to keep quiet. So I'm going to say rap because of that. And we are working on it. So we cannot just keep quiet and so many things are happening. One, they have to block the road of... Uh, uh, Cadbury, Agidimbi, because they enter into the vehicle of a woman. And later, when I remove them from that vehicle, they say they demanded for 30,000 bribe and so on. So we have to take responsibility. Civil society, we have to make them to do what they are supposed to be doing. If things like this happen, who do you report to? Who is going to take charge of the case? Who is going to ensure that you are remedied? or you get some redress from this kind of issues. So these are some of the issues that are critical. Now, going to look at bullying in the workplace. Bullying. Workplace bullying, I say, is defined as the ill will and a treatment of an employee by another employee through behavior such as that is opprobrious, abusive, derogatory, insulting, offensive, libellous, venomous, intimidating, embarrassing, sabotaging somebody's work with vindictiveness and hatefulness with the intention to obstruct work productivity. That is the definition of it. And you see it all over the place. You see a series of abuses, series of insults, and so on, derogatory, uh, relegating, berating uh, attitude on the part of other people. So how do we take care of this kind of situation? So this is how workplace building can to a situation we are, I think I reported one that a, a lecturer slapped a, a lady because she didn't wear Ankara. This happened at the, I'll, I'll be mentioning names, at the Nandi Azikwe University in Opa. Mr. Lecturer slapped a lady because she didn't wear Ankara that she he, he asked other people to wear. She was slapped and so on. And this are some of the issues that puts in weapon to those that carry out this kind of uh, nefarious act. So workplace violence is also defined as any physical assault, threatening behavior, threat itself alone is violence or verbal abuse within a work setting. These are some of the things that we have seen. Let me give you one example again. I was in one of the major uh, management bodies In 
working training of that bastion of management practice in the whole of Africa. And she will she will call for a meeting. Rather than for her to go to the office of the person she wants to abuse, she will call for a meeting and she will she will start with that abuse. She will not stop for one hour she's abusing one person. A particular lady say she could not sleep for three days. I was there when she was abusing the lady. She said, you call yourself a chartered accountant. How are you better than people selling uh, pepper at my two markets? The, the, uh, the next person to her is a male. He's a president of major chamber of commerce in Nigeria today. That one sits there. Everybody sits there. She will abuse the person. And later, somebody will say that he cannot sleep. Later, the, the, the council, they told us that this woman will come to the council, abuse everybody that there was to be abused. And I, one day I went to Abuja. I went to one uh, restaurant. I was taking my meal. One man was narrating how a woman abused him on that day. That if not for his wife, he could have... Resorted into uh, Sir mentioned the name of the person, it is this same woman, and so on. Now, we now say, what are we going to do about this? We have to call ourselves together, together with union and everybody. We have to find a way to send that away. Because the abuse was out of hand. So we had a meeting, and when she came one day, we confronted her. And we told the driver that brought her that it's better to take her back because she cannot stay in this office anymore. We are sending her away. She has two years to spend, but she has spent one year. We have allowed her. We have had enough. She cannot stay in this place anymore. And we, we resisted her and so on. And she went back. It, it, the, the next time we saw her was when she was handing over to another person. In fact, it was it was horrible situation. And later the members of the council are saying that we rescued them from abusive woman from a woman that will come she asked me, in fact i learned i was not there i learned that she said if you want to abuse anybody you can rent me i will do a good job for you and of course she will do a good job she will do a good job so these are some of the issues i'm talking about civilized environment and I'm talking. I'm not even talking about organization that is owned by one man and so on. I'm talking about uh, a major body that's supposed to know better. So these are some of the issues. So uh, how bullying destroys organization. So it, 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 it's a, it's a public health calamity. It's a malignancy that encroaches and destroys the workplace. If, if it's unaddressed, the problem spreads like a virus and threatens the integrity of that organization. Like any undesirable disease, it must be neutralized and abrogated. And when I was talking about uh, neutralizing it the other time, when I was talking about Oblapia, that it was too on the hard side. But this is the way to handle it. But may, we are going to have some discussion. It's going to be like, okay, how, how do you see it? How do we put a stop to this? And so on. So we neutralize play with every gentility, with every humility. It has to be neutralized and abrogated. So it is very, very important that this is uh, taken care of. An organizational health cannot be restored if it's disregarded. So it has to be looked into. So what are the warning signs of a bully? Numerous complaints by employees about a particular person. Notice the employees almost always agree with the supervisor. 
I staff turn over. We have also found out from research that 65% of the reason why people resign has to do with a person putting the supervisor. And when you are told that one or more groups of employees are experiencing high level of stress, then what is the organization supposed to do? So these are some of the signs. These are some of the signs when people are saying, I cannot work under this man. This one say, no, this man, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I prefer to go than to work under this man. You know that those are the signs. Those are the warning signs that you have to look at. So behaviors frequently used by bullies. What are the behaviors? What are the conduct of a bully? Verbal bullying tactics. Repeatedly using verbal aggression. They are always aggressive. They are always very, very aggressive. Then you have non-verbal bullying tactics using non-verbal signals that denote disapproval. Practical bullying tactics, transmitting nasty images to a colleague. It can even come in, in terms of uh, uh, online measures and so on. And also you have performance-related bullying. Mm -hmm. Continued unwarranted criticism of a particular person's performance. So these are some of the issues that has to be looked into when you see that situation. So a person's in bullying behavior may have uh, some uh, organ, uh, some authority and so on. That and their approach is very very uh, uh, critical, and everybody must look at it. And why is this? But these approaches has to be looked into. Why do we have a situation like this? Why is a person bullying other colleagues? And nobody can say anything. Some of them come from a very, very uh, 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 strong power, strong political connections. And that's why they are doing what they are doing. And nobody can. So what's a leader's reaction to bullying behavior? Some, some aspect of leader's behavior to bullying behavior, denier. They can say, it's, uh, no, it can't happen here. It can't happen. We are it is happening. No, I've never seen anything like that. Yes, yet it's going on. And also in some cases, they enable the people that are bullying other people. They are enabled. They are enabled. When they report and nothing is done, it, that's enablement. Then excuses, say, oh, it is because, uh, you know, uh, we don't have another person to replace him. That's why we cannot do anything about him. So we have to leave him. It's always... For me. Is bring the organization or do anything about him. So what what to do? What are we to do? What are we to do? Don't ignore it. In the hope that they will go away. I've noticed from my own experience that those guys that are bullying others, they don't ever stop until they are confronted. They don't ever, ever stop until they are confronted. Something happened. I was working in one of the uh, biggest director's organization in the whole of Africa. I was working in that place. There is this president man that comes in. He comes like he comes to resume in that place. He does whatever he likes, bullies everybody, talks to people rudely, abuses anybody, and so on. And usually he will come, he will start with the DG. I was the number two man in that place. I was the number two man, but he will berate. And he late, harasses, embarrasses number one man. Every time he comes, he does that. He rubbishes the man and so on. One day I say, I can't be civilized, cannot be here all day. If you are coming to do it, no problem. If I've left, no, you can continue to do it. But for the fact that I'm here, you can do it, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. You can. So when I, when I was shouting, and to be in this. Why you are coming to harass people in October? 20 roadmap I signed. I gave it to the number one. 
man. Go and give to the man. I'm leaving. Meanwhile, I was packing my things. And of course, I, I decided to go. He went to give the man the letter. When he gave the man the letter, the man said they should call me. I asked myself, should I answer the man or should I go? Oh, they will count it as arrogance. Okay, let me go and attend to the man. I attended to the man. I went to where the man was. And he said, me, I, I was talking, I was behaving, I mean, I was behaving like a woman. He said, why are you behaving like a woman? Just because we are giving, I went to resign. Why are you behaving like a woman? And so on. He now said they should give him the letter. They now gave the letter to him. He now told the letter to the uh, waste bin. He said, I've turned it, I've turned the letter. We are go back to do your work. He turned it to, it, 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 to joke. He turned the whole thing to joke and everything. The reason why he cannot talk to me really is that I was making some money for the organization. But I cannot continue to be there. Why the man will be harassing, embarrassing, and elating another human being? I could not take it. I said, let me just leave. And he turned me to joke and everything. Later, I found out that he stopped that behavior. That unwarranted behavior, that obnoxious behavior, he stopped it. The even number one. From the man, it's what is wrong? We humility, we remove arrogance from it, we remove aggression from it, but we stand and say, This is it. We need to speak up and say, This thing is not right. And now is what I did, depending on how other people we handle it. That was how I was able to handle it. Not be perfect. How I was able to handle this young situation. In some cases, you have hostile work environment that is created by boss himself or co-workers. They make the place uncomfortable, and the expectation in, in some cases are, are not reasonable. Your KPI is being met, but they, are, they usually tell you that, okay, it is because we reduce it for you, so we hide it for you, and so on. And the behavior actions or communication must be discriminatory in nature. That is what we have in some places. Everything is discriminatory on account of agenda, on account of uh, a tribe, on account of anything. They discriminate. In fact, at times they will not say it, but you have been discriminated against, which is very, very uh, uh, unwholesome. So building a, 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 a blustering, bro beating person, one habitually cruel, very cruel, very cruel. And it has some concern, the concern about discrimination, concern so that it not only to violence, it drains more reproduction that is bullied. It's not happy. There's no way you can get the best from someone that is not happy. And it has its impact on the on the on the on the profitability of the organization. That's the bottom line. So you have to look at it. So and we have some statistics here. 35% of workers feel bullied at work. 16% suffered health problem. But I told you of a woman who not sleep. A woman who a woman that cannot sleep. We told you about a woman. I mean, abuses her in a work environment. I'm not talking about 1830. I'm talking about what happened recently in our country. 70 percent put their jobs to escape bullying. 70 percent will resign to escape bullying. How can this continue to be? And that's why I'm saying that there should be a place to report to. As a matter of fact, I think my own body, I have to raise it at the Association of Corporate Governance Professionals of Nigeria that people should come and report to us whoever that is bullied anywhere, anywhere in all over 36 states of Nigeria, whoever that, that is bullied should come and report to us, should come and report to us, to come and make complaint to us, then we take it up from there. Most complaints are about being bullied by a supervisor or co-workers. So all this 
is not very, very good for us. It's not good for us. It's not good at all. So we have to look at it. It's not good for us. So most bullying is same sex arising behavior not covered by law. Women, 50% of the perpetrator pool. Half of all reported bullying is woman on woman. Then status blind harassment also happen. Bullying is psychological violence and, and so on. And three times more prevalent than sexual harassment. Bullying is Times more it's all over us and this form supposed to harass working together with anybody, come what may. So we have to look at it. You have also third party harassment. If you're not found offensive by some employees can facilitate an offensive environment for other Sorry. All right, sorry. So uh, I'm saying that what to do, what do we do? I say that we must not, not ignore it. We must not ignore it. If we cannot handle it, then we have to report it. We have to report it to whatever authority. And if we cannot uh, report to the authority, then we have to report to the civil society. The, the most important aspect of this problem is that people are afraid to lose their jobs and that's why they cannot report it and so on because they don't know where it will land and so on except somebody who, who basically is a stickler for the writing whatever may happen irrespective of whose us is god and so on so it depends on what the person is basically trying to achieve so what to do why is it important for employees to report why do we need to report? Why do we need to report? Uh, discrimination, workplace harassment, and sexual harassment can cause employees to be hurt emotionally. That's why we need to report it. Productivity will go down. That's why we need to report it. Absenteeism to go up. That is why we need to report it. The work agency organization will be jeopardized. Employees to be fearful of others, to live in fear. And this is what we have seen. I've seen a place where all the senior people of that organization, they live in fear of a man, only one man. 20 other people that are very senior, very close to him in rank, are afraid. Anytime he comes, they are jittery, they are shaky. Workplace morale will be reduced if nothing is done. On some days. So uh, why do employees hesitate to report? Like I did say, they, they, they hesitate to report because of the number one fear of losing their job. I've had to say it on one, two, three, four occasions that I am not afraid to lose my job. 
Nobody <laughs> uh, uh, um, says that. It's, oh, this is crazy and so on. But excuse me, rather than for me to be in a place where people will be uh, unnecessarily, unwarrantedly being abused, it's better for me to speak up and to lose my job rather than for another person to be to be uh, uh, dealt with in such a very, very negative manner. Fear of retaliation, fear of getting someone into trouble, fear of disrupting the workplace, fear of being embarrassed when you go to report that this person did this to you, this person touched you unwarrantedly and so on. Fear of not being believed. These are some of the fears. These are some of the problems that makes people not to go and report. So what to do? Be assertive. I used to encourage people, don't be like me. Be assertive. Stand up and say, this thing is not right. All right? Check with others. Check with others. So if this happens to you, what do you do? Does it happen in other organizations and so on? So you have to look at that. Keep a diary. Use performance document review. Seek appropriate counseling. Get counseling from people who are enlightened, people who have had to go through such situation. So look at it. If harassment continues, you need to text someone. You need to file a complaint. You need to file a complaint. Who do you complain to? Senior people, authority, someone that that person can respect. You can see the one that happened at the University of Calabar, the man that has it as mandates. And that's why we say in corporate governance, there must be checks and balance. But this man is the only man, a professor of law, is the only one that mobilizes students for law school. In corporate governance, it is an aberration. This man is the only man that mobilizes people. And he has to have kind of knowledge of girls before he enrolls them for law school. Now the case is still on now. And I even learned that somebody, a lady, was supporting him in his dastardly acts. What to do? Seek a new job. Seek a new job. Full of criminal charge letter to the authority. In fact, as a matter of fact, in Lagos State, we have a uh, 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 civil uh, 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 a place that uh, there is uh, a body defender, public defender. We have it in Lagos. You can approach them, and I'm sure they will do something. I've cases that they are they are, I I visited office and they they are actually up and doing. So things can be done in that way. Now supervisor. Set an example of respective workplace. You are supervising, so you are supervising some people. Have clear expectation that discrimination, workplace harassment, and sexual harassment are not tolerated. Let it be something that everybody will have behind their minds. It will be part of your policy that this state. have a clear a, a, a reporting line inappropriate behavior or conduct as it occurs. This is the duty of the supervisor. It's a secret mandate that every supervisor, head of the department, must basically uh, take cognizance of. Guard against retaliation. It's like a, uh, uh, a whistleblower. How do you protect a whistleblower? It's the same way you protect those people that report cases of bullying and harassment. Handle investigation as discreetly as possible. Be sensitive to the feelings of all involved. Be emotionally intelligent when you are handling some of these complaints and cases. So it is very, very important. It is very, very important. And this is, this is the guideline for supervisor. So keep lines of communication open. Let people be able to tell us anything going on that is and that is perceived to be uh, contrary to the well-being of the organization. Act immediately if you suspect harassment. Accurate documents, suspected in, uh, incidents. Put it in the document and let it be documented and let it be taken officially. 
and other guidelines is report concern complaints to the appropriate department listens seriously attentively to the complaint of anyone that is harassed it does not matter your relationship with the person encourage them to say no to harassing behavior keep everything confidential so it is very very important and protection keep your hands to yourself don't talk about private issues on the job don't miss social life with job related discussion Keep any compliment casual and fairly impersonal in the work environment. So this is very, very important. Avoid jokes, phrases, gesture, that has sexual meaning. Respect person's personal space. Don't uh, enter into the personal space of other people uninvited. Do not respond to seductive behavior. Somebody is bringing it, just uh, terminate it. Respectful behavior facilitates more productive employees. So all these are very, very important. So uh, compliant or how do we handle if an employee is found to have raised a malicious or false complaint? So how as well? Because somebody can say somebody did this, but the person did not do that. So how do you handle it? So there has to be appropriate disciplinary action, which may include termination of employment, engagement relationship with the company, as the case may be, if somebody has to bring first a case against other people and so on. So it is also part of the problem. When people bring first case, first evidence against other people. So what can you do? Be professional, set a positive example, think before making personal comments. Be supportive of the people who wish to talk about being harassed. Direct them to appropriate places. Hold some accountable for his or her action. Don't make excuses for anybody. Demand that the harassment be stopped. Report sexual harassment to responsible person in the organization, excepting in a case where they cannot handle it in that organization. And it is the employer's res responsibility. The owner of the business, the board of the business, the governors of the business to prevent or deter committing of any of this harassing situation. And therefore, there has to be creation of appropriate working conditions, ensuring female staff are not treated as sex objects. You see, some one happens very close in the group, sometimes they go and so in the factory. So some of these issues are the issue that our civil society group, NGOs must stand up and do something about. Ensure that no male employee or third party will outrage or insult the modesty of a female colleague. Ensuring that no male employee or third party will make any type of sexual advances to female colleagues in the place of work. Establishment also of complaint committee. Let that be complaint committee. It is the responsibility of the owner's business to ensure that there is a complaint committee of issues like that. Once there is a committee in place, people will be very, very careful on what they do. Okay. And also there has to be policy. Policy has to be uh, strictly adhered to. Of course, if there is no policy, what are we adhering to? There has to be policy in place that will redress some of these uh, complaints and so on. And the policy has to be communicated. Everybody has to, uh, has to see it. So now what are the things that we, we need to look at? What events occurred? When we are looking at issues of harassment and so on, how do we handle it? How do we take care of the case, especially when you have a committee in place and so on? Where, where did it happen? When, when did it happen? Who, who is the alleged harasser? So all this has to be documented and so on. And also that there has to be interview of the alleged harasser. The alleged harasser has to be interviewed to diffuse defensive tension, plan the sequence of questions, start with simple non-controversial questions that the employee can easily and willingly answer. You need psychology at this time when you are dealing with harasser. Inform the accused person of the allegations and that the organization has a legal to investigate. Confidentiality is very, very important as well. So how do we handle uh, such a situation? How do we take care of such a situation? 
and also some of the uh, evidences that you may bring together are, are, are photographs, time attendant record, gifts, and so on, are some of the issues that are critical. The offensive objects has to be tabled itself, email text messages, WhatsApp, voice me messages. These are evidences that you can note, journal, and so on. These are some of the things that you can put together to make basic uh, evidence uh, that, okay, this thing happened at what time and so on, and at the place that it happened. And these are some of the things that uh, occurs during that uh, uh, period that uh, we are recording, we are, we are taking care of. Now, when you are putting down the document, what do you need to put in the document? You, you put uh, executive summary, uh, summarize the case, what are the issues that happened and so on, then report the elements, reduce the totality of the investigation to, to written investigation and so on. Then let there be evidences, list all documents and physical evidence collected in support of the investigation. And look at the scope. Is it the one that happens at that particular period or you want to extend it to the one that has happened in the past and so on? And chronology of event, list all interviewed witnesses and the date and also location of each uh, uh, interview and so on. Then put your conclusion and recommendation together. Then allegation that is uh, leveled against a particular person, then you will find this and so on. The separate take action. You put all this together without action. When you put it together, what are you doing? It's either you hand over the person to order to the authority of the organization, to the police in some cases. You know, in our country, it is very difficult to handle cases, to hand over cases to police because of the crisis of trust and so on. So it is very, very critical for you to be able to take action that basically will bring results. So this is very, very important. And in order to have a, uh, an environment that is free of all this, what do we do? As we are trying to close down on solutions, what do we do in order to bring this to uh, uh, a, a place where you have Bully free environment, what do we do to have a sane environment, a civilized environment to remove all the instability that we have seen all over the place? In the work environment, you have it. In the hospital system, you have it. When the doctors and nurses, bullying doctors, bullying nurses, something happened in OAU, was still not last year. Uh, the uh, the dog performed the opus and they sent the nurses to clean up the whole place. And the nurses, they are more senior than the doctors. The nurses, they, they cannot clean up. The doctors themselves that did the operation should clean up and so on. And and they bully one another and so on. And I don't know, the, 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 the case lingers for some time. So you have you have it all over the place. You have it all over in the in the in the school system. The, the Mr. Headmaster, Mr. Teacher, everybody bullying one another. You see it all over the place. So how do you handle uh, such a uh, system, such a situation, and so on? So we need to create a bully-free work environment that as autonomy individual can challenge whatever that is meted out to him in a very, very decent manner. There should be encouragement of open door policy that anybody can come to report to the authority. If there is that encouragement, it will go a long way. Improve management ability and sensitivity towards dealing with responding to conflicts. Recognize bullying is happening. In some cases, we deny. In some cases, we ignore. And in some cases, we don't trust the report that is submitted. So. Serious uh, has to be taken in all this, and we need to investigate promptly, conduct findings of fact analysis, fact analysis, to get to the root of the issue and to know the truth, and to make the harasser or the one that bullies to surrender to the truth, intervene, 
conduct employee attitude survey at least once in a year. Employee attitude survey once in a year. Old bullies are accountable. Whoever that does that, as I've said it that where I work, the man that bullies everybody is the number one man. I'm not talking about a small organization. I'm talking about a multinational insurance company. And the man is the number one man. And everybody is afraid. When people come to work in the morning, they are jittery. They are shaky. Except only one small boy that confronted the man. And that thing stopped on that day. That was the day that we didn't see that kind of a situation there. And he, he, I was told that he's going to sack me. But all the years I spent, till I resigned by myself, he didn't sack me. And so on. Conduct findings of fact analysis. Intervene if necessary. Conduct employee attitude survey. Conduct attitude survey is very, very important. I say maybe once in a year. Support organizations anti-bullying campaign. Oh, the awareness campaign for everyone. Let there be awareness. You can imagine some of these issues may have to do with the fact that bullies, they are not educated enough to know that what they are doing is evil. Let there be education. Education is not about how to read and write. Education is about everything about life. Mr. Bully may not know. He may never know that what he's doing basically is not, is not good. He may not know. He may just come. That is his nature. That is his nurture. His nature and nurture is that everybody bullies everybody around him. Everybody bullies as he is growing up anywhere. Everybody bullies everybody. Accepting somebody makes him to know. Accepting somebody educates him. He may not know. Creates zero tolerance and anti-bullying policy. So it is very, very embrace employees' health and well-being. When people are bullied, they may have mental uh, health challenges. As a matter of fact, I've seen it. When people are bullied, they, 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 they resort to some mild form of neurosis because they are bullied. They are shaky. If when they want to eat, they are shaky. Anything they want to, they are shaky. When they, when they, they hear their name, they, they shake because somebody has bullied them somewhere. It is something that is untoward. It is something that is uncharacteristic. It is something that is never, never to be ignored. It is something that everybody must stand up and say, no, this is not uh, right. Nami and Nami said it's a leader's responsibility to create a work environment that is free from bullying. It is not human resources manager's job. Bullying is too serious to be left to those without the power to compare compliance with new standards of practice or new ways to behave interpersonally. It is not HR job. It is not. It's a serious job that must involve everybody, especially the leadership of that organization. So what are the benefits of addressing disruptive behaviors? What are the benefits? When you when you address a bullish, when you ad, a, address harassing behavior, this is the benefit you have. One, improve staff satisfaction and retention. Two, enhance reputation for your organization as a good place to work. Create culture of professionalism. Important role model for all other people. Improve employee safety and quality of performance. It reduces liability, exposure, and management. More civil, productive, and desirable workplace. It makes environment more civil. In fact, everywhere that I've worked, when I anywhere I see uh, bullying behavior, I see uncivilized environment. I see environment that is very, very slave trader. So that is what I've been seeing. So some benefits when you have organization that is free of these uh, uh, behaviors. And how do we respond effectively to, to workplace bullying? How do we respond effectively? One, attend communication skill training. 
Let every staff attend communication skill training. If they don't know, they cannot flow. And if you don't train them, don't blame them. You see it all over the place. People don't understand that communication is much, much, much more than talking. It has to do with interpersonal relationship. Attend anger management courses. Attend remedial supervisory training course. Be held accountable for their actions. So it is very, very important. In responding, in responding to um, workplace bullying, in responding, you, we need to address that behavior when it happens. One of the ways to attend to it is to assert yourself so that you can retain control of the situation. I've, I've, I've had to do this. Even as I was uh, very young in a work environment, I've had to stand up. I've had to assertively stop some of these things. I don't fear losing my job or anything. I stood up. I said, no, this is not right. In as much as possible and demonstrate to the bully that their tactics cannot control you. I tell you that a bully saw me. I was on the sixth floor about to enter into the league. A bully saw me ran back. A powerful man. He ran. It occurs to me that what the, the language that bully understand is assertiveness, is to stand up and say no. And some of the ways to, to respond also, also is to address the bullying behavior. Two, document what is happening to you, if it is happening to you personally. In my own case, it has not happened to me personally, but it has happened to people, and I have had to stand up and say, no, excuse me, I'm sorry. I can't be here. If I'm no more here, you can do it. I'm so sorry. I, can't, I'm, no, I don't know why. Two, seek support from family and friends. If you are going through that, if you are, because some people, they are just falling into mental health challenges. So talk to family and friends. Talk to them. Eat balanced diet, exercise regularly, and so if it's affecting you, as well, because somebody say you cannot eat for three days, cannot sleep for three days, so you have to look at it. Responding, continue, plan special treat for yourself, seek professional help, protect your self esteem, your self confidence, and emotional well being. Don't let people push you down, don't let them push you to turn me lunch. I was going for a meeting last year somewhere around the booty meter i as i entered into third main land break i saw uh i saw last night i saw fire service i saw uh rapid response and so on i knew that somebody has fallen into this river later we had that a young lady was arguing arguing and she, and the man refused. He said, look, I, I will jump. And the man stopped. He came down from the vehicle, jumped into the river because of some of the things that he, she was passing through. Of course, we learned that he has problem with the fiance. They, they have done their introduction just for them to uh, do the marriage ceremony and so on. And she, she entered into the... And, and it happens in work environment where people are pushed to the world. When people are terribly, embarrassingly are disturbed and they're out of their senses and so they can do and undo. They can do whatever and so on. Preserve your personal power and maintain any boundaries. Embrace faith. Embrace faith. Faith also uh, helps to stabilize uh, somebody that is going through some bullying, some harassment and so on. Embrace faith. Eh? Think about higher power. Think about a God in heaven, look up unto him, and so on. Then, uh, as a last resort, seek alternative employment. If you cannot uh, take it anymore, if you cannot be able to contain the issue that happens around that environment, it's better to save your life to seek alternative employment. And talking to an alleged bully, how do you talk to the person? I'm rounding up now. How you talk to the bully? If you're a target, if you are the target of a witness to a bullying uh, and harassment, how do you handle such shit? Say that I have not been a target, but I've witnessed it. I've been part of the 
situation and so on. So tell the bully what behavior was inappropriate. Let the bully know that this behavior is not acceptable. This behavior is not civilized way of taking care of issues. You can do it in another way. We, you can make some suggestion on how it can be able to handle such situation. Make it clear the behavior is unwanted and unacceptable. Stay calm. You don't need to be ag excessively aggressive. You don't need to misbehave. You don't need to behave like uh, someone that is coming from the garage. Stay calm, even as you are assertive, as you are taking care of the issue. Don't stand on your feet. Speak gently, but authoritatively. Don't retaliate. Even when the person abuses you, don't retaliate. Only try to make your point. Educate the person to see the uh, the terribleness of his or her behavior and report it if need be. Report it. So education, education, education. I've said that education is not about knowing how to read and write. Education is about everything. People that are bullying people, harassing people, embarrassing people. What they need is education more than any other thing. They need there to be educated. So this is the key. It's very, very important. And uh, protecting yourself is very, very important. Together, you must want to create and maintain work environment that is free of harassment. The golden rule is that treat others the way you want to be treated. Everybody should, should be aware of this. Treat people the way you want to be treated. You can be the one that is bullying other people. Put yourself in their shoes. Be emotionally intelligent enough to know what they are going through when they are being bullied. So look at that. Say no. Say no everywhere to whatever harassment. Everywhere. And we, we are even talking about university. It happens even in the work environment. It happens in, in, a, in a, a hospital system, school system. Every system, it happens. It happens everywhere. And wherever it happens, we must stand up and say no to it. In fact, I don't need to be told. I don't need to be asked to join. I don't need to be asked and reported to. If I see it anywhere in America, it can be anywhere. I will stand up and say, no, this is not right. This is unacceptable. This is This is an LD workplace. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm so glad to have had this uh, opportunity to speak to every one of us tonight. Thank you very much. So uh, over to you. Uh, over to you, Mr. Yemi. Thank you so much, doctor. That was yes. very explosive, very insightful. We would like to take a few questions, contributions, or experience sharing. If you would like to contribute to tonight's discussion, please raise your hands quickly and we we'll recognize you and enable you to ask your questions or make your contributions. Meanwhile, doctor, while you were speaking earlier, some questions were dropped in, in the chat, chat box. You may just want to check through the chat message. Yes, let's ask the questions. So that uh, in case people don't want to raise their hands. So for example, Favor here says, what if the MD, who should be the one who should enforce compliance with anti-bully measures is the bully? That's a question from Favor, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. A question here from Favor. What if the MD, who should be the one who should enforce compliance with anti-bullying measure is the bully? It appears doctor cannot hear me. I don't know if it's my network. Hello, doctor. Uh, 
I'm also dropping the questions again. If you have typed the question before, you can drop it again if you can see it. If not, we will just call it a wrap. Hello, sir. Okay. So, Mudukwe, you can unmute, please. I can't hear again. Hello, Mudukwe. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. I have a question. Go ahead, please. Okay, so I want to ask about the reporting committee. Doctor said something about reporting committee. So I wanted to know who should who should the members be? If you are setting up a reporting committee, who should who are the members? Who are the members to be part of the committee? It's like doctor is not here. I think doctor has network issues. He's no, bad, yeah. Okay. He's been logged out. Okay, I can hear you now, please. Okay, doctor, I was asking. I wanted yes. to know who I the members. I wanted to know who the members of the reporting committee is. You mentioned something like um, there should be a reporting committee set up for bullying and then um, sexual harassment. Okay, very well. Yes. <clears throat> is a committee that can be set up in any organization that will comprise of uh, some head of departments and some key people in organization. Odd number, for example, there should be odd number committee that will be set up. And once that committee is in place, everybody will be aware that you can't just do whatever you want to do, that there is a committee that is basically side due with the responsibility of ensuring that everybody do the writing, especially issues that regards uh, harassment, sexual, and otherwise. Okay, so so so, doctor, yes. please just one, just um, another question. So Go I wanted ahead. to know, um, can you can you also report other concerns outside of these two, outside of this um, bullying and uh, what's it called, sexual harassment? Because, um, so for instance, let me just elaborate a little bit on this. Um, yes. At my own place of work, yes, we have what we call whistle blowing. So I'm thinking yes. in line with um, the reporting committee. So uh, I'm looking at the um, area of that whistle blowing where an employee can just whistle blow and then an investigation to that effect would commence. So would you say that is also, you know, um, sufficient? Because some people might not want to come out. They want to remain anonymous. So would you say you, you, can, um, you can use a mechanism like the um, whistleblow for people to, 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 to come out and report a concern? Because it falls under my place of work that even if there is any form of sexual harassment, you might just go through the whistleblowing channel yes absolutely the reason is this this is a corporate governance issue yeah and whistleblowing uh provision is very very critical in corporate governance teenagers so okay. issue that relates to bullying harassment all these are corporate governance issues and the whistleblower and basically report it as well. The same way, financial uh, fraud or all manners of misbehavior can be reported. It's still the same. And the attention will be given to it. It will be uh, investigated and committee will be set up as, uh, except in the place where there is committee already. Committee will be set up. And I, I, mm -hmm. remember, I remember when I was at the Lagos State Public Service Star Development Center, I was the counseling psychologist for the center. Every staff in Lagos State have issues 
that really drives me the artist and that that leads to performance on the job, issues that relates to mental challenges and so on. They come to this clinic. On a particular day, a lady came and she reported that there is a particular lecturer, because I lectured there too. Okay. A particular lecturer was having carnal knowledge of ladies. And I clearly went to report the head of the place. The head of the place at that time was one Dr. Mrs. Ajaja. And immediately she set up a panel. I was the chairman of the panel. Somebody was to blow in my own office and I reported it immediately. And there was no uh, existing panel. A panel was set up. And of course, we dealt with the issue and so on. And that we paid for that. So it's a corporate governance issue, whistleblowing, tenants and provision is very, very relevant. Okay, to all right. Thank you so much for clarifying, doctor. Thank you so Thank much. You, sir. Thank very you, well. sir. Yes. Thank you so much. The other question, I don't know if you can hear me now, doc. Yes, I can hear you clearly. On the chat box. If you can just check the chat box. You will see the question, sir. Okay. So that it's okay, let me check. Okay. Okay, let me check. Okay. 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 Let me check it. Okay. Reported by a female. Let me go up. Let me think. Ah, sorry. What do you do when a work bully is a HOD? Who then the likes and would ignore all the acts? To keep him and the person will see errors in in people's department and we choose to keep it till management meeting to report to the md in front of other HODs. meanwhile his department is full of errors and he will be so upset and vengeful if called out now like i i think i've mentioned this let me let me try to log out of this. Let me log out of yes, I think I've mentioned that particular incident that the, that guy is a bully, is doing so well, is basically making a lot of uh money, so to say, for the organization, and it's like untouchable. So, how do you handle such a person? The best so, and seen it before in that organization we do not have uh, a, a, a you know so but we quickly do was to start also they don't allow they, they didn't allow the joint union so what we did was that because there is right of association what you need to do when you see situation like that is to set up a staff consultative committee and let it be tabled before that committee and let that re a committee report to the MD. It is not one man that is reporting now. It is a conglomerate of people that are reporting. And the MD will do something about it if he's wise to so do something about it. That's why the fact that that person is untouchable. When you set up a committee among yourself, you, you, of course, people will ask you, what, who, who give you the right to uh, organize a committee? We did it because... There is right of association. We set up the committee on ourselves as a staff. We did set up a committee and we look into some of this issue and we reported it to the authority. And except in a case where there is a corporate governance provision in that organization, MD is not the final authority in any organization. And that's why we say that there has to be a governance a, a board. There has to be a board of every organization. We are advocating now that there has to be a board. To that extent, it is not Mr. MD that is the final arbitrary or final authority in any organization. When the MD cannot handle the situation, then that to be basically looked into on its own merit. That those are the last resort. Those are the last resort. Otherwise, the person concerned can meet the MD, explain to the MD, narrate the issues to the MD, make the MD to be aware of what is going on. And from there, MD will be able, and I must say, he should be able to handle the situation. If he cannot be able to handle the situation, MD is not the final authority in corporate governance. There is also a board. 
one man is the MD, God has many people who can look into that issue. And so once you are two, three, four people, you set up a panel and so on. Of course, it's to be taken seriously. And that, from my own experience, that was how issues like that was handled. Let me see. Am I okay with that? I think open door policy can be misinterpreted by employees and sometimes the employer. Now, it has been abused in many places. But in corporate governance, we talk about facts. F-A-R-T. F for fairness. A for accountability. R for responsibility. And T for transparency. In corporate governance, we talk about open door policy. Accepting if that organization does not want to have anything to do with the tenet of corporate governance. Otherwise, everything now is transparent. And that is open door. You can't say today, in 21st century, that everything you want to be shrouded in secrecy. You don't want people to report anything to you, no. Today, corporate governance talks about FART, F-A-R-T. Then, what is what if the HR is the bully? What do we do? What bodies handle this? If the HR is the bully, HR has people that is uh, uh, reporting to. HR is not a god unto himself. HR reports to other people. Whoever that HR is reporting to reports the HR to the person. Everybody under corporate governance tenant must have somebody that is reporting to. That is why you have uh, you have three arms of government. One is not exclusive of, of, of the other. One is not superior to the other. If you have HR, HR has people that he reports to people that, and that is the board. And that is the, uh, uh, when you have board, board is not one person, it's not two person, it's not three person, it's not four person in some cases, and so on. So. Everybody cannot uh, uh, align to what is wrong. Somebody will say, excuse me, I think this is not right. So if HR is the person that is the bully, he, he has to be confronted, he has to be faced, he has to be told, he has to be tutored, he has to be educated. He has to know that what he's doing is not right. Let me see other ones. What if the MD, who should be the one who should enforce compliance with anti-bullying, measure is bullying. I have said it that it happens that MDs are bullies. It happens in most, I mean, in some cases, I've seen it. And I've told you of the cases that I'm involved. Mr. MD, I assertively faced him face to face. And I told him that this thing that you are doing is wrong. And I told him that the reason you are doing this is because these people, they don't want to lose their jobs. I told him I'm not, I'm not afraid to lose my job, but I will tell you the truth. Many people cannot do that. They can handle it in another way. The MD himself, you can set up some people, some committees, and they'll meet the MD. And I'm sure if people say they want to meet with you and so on, and they say no, then you know that that is the height of irresponsibility. And in corporate government, we talk about responsibility. We say that everybody should put himself in such a way that is it can be approached by other people. So let the committee meet him and let them hear themselves out and let them tell him what they feel is not good about what he's doing. Yes. What if the HR is being uh, bullied? Who is HR is expected to report? <laughs> well, 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 all these things that I'm just talking about, I'm answering in a rush and so on. You are going to still analyze it. And so on. the one that you are not happy with, you let me know. I'm just said, talking from my own experience, the way I handled it and so on. And yes, if the HR is being uh, bullied, Himself, who is HR expected to uh, report to? If the HR himself is bullied, he has to protect himself. He has to protect himself emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, 
socially and otherwise. He has to protect himself. He has to call for a meeting with the one that is bullying him or her. He has to call for a meeting. I'm not saying that people should do, I've advised people, don't do the way I do my own. There are better ways to do it. Incidentally, what I did achieved results. But it is, I mean, people are different, places are different, and so on. So you have to look at it. The HR that is being bullied has to protect himself, has to protect herself. He has to call on people that are basically senior to him in that organization. Let them know what is going through. By the time he explains to them, by the time he, he, he uh, has some discussion with them, then the one that is close in rank to Mr. MD or whoever that is bullying the person will call the person's attention. Or the one that simulates the person that is bullying other people we call him to action. We call him and say, look, this is the report that we have had. I, I know that the report may not be right. The report may not be right. This is the observation. Let This is our advice. This is our counsel going forward. I think that can be done. Please send the uh, presentation. That one is not a problem. Presentation is not a problem. I'm send, I'll send the presentation tonight to the coordinator of the program. As soon as I'm through, I'm going to send the presentation. Let me see other questions. That is what matters now. No one should walk alone on the HR journey. Do you have a colleague or associate you would like to invite to join the HR mentorship group? Okay, okay, that is uh, from uh, Mr. Adioshun. Yes, yes, okay, yes. What if the MD, what if the MD, let me see that. What if the MD wish to be the one which will enforce compliance? We have talked about that. We are talking about corporate governance now. What happens in a situation where case of sexual harassment is reported by female employee and there was denial? that she was drunk and the reporting leverage on it. Of course, that, 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 that is... Once somebody reports something and that person is not in the right state of mind at that particular time, of course, that report cannot be taken seriously. When somebody reports something and that person is not in a good state of mind and so on, of course, that is, that is the end of the case because the person is not in the right frame of mind to be able to make any... Uh, reasonable report and so on all right so what happens what happens in a situation where case of sexual harassment is reported okay that's the same thing all right okay i'm sorry the case where employee was sexually harassed by another employee the organization policy was that such issue should be reported to the law enforcer that is police after reporting the case to the management and the employee decided not to press charges, what should the organization do at this time? If they are not pressing charges, of course, the case is withdrawn and everybody is assuaged. As a matter of fact, I basically am wary of reporting cases to police. Somebody was jump into the river to commit suicide. The guy came out. I mean, sorry, he was followed. He was rescued from committing suicide. He was taken to the police station. And the police policemen charged him for on three count charge of uh, one, attempted murder, two, uh, 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 disruption of territorial water. And then the, the third one, that he, he run for his uh, responsibilities and so on. he owes some people and everything want to end it like that and so on. Now somebody helped the guy. The guy was said to have owed about nine hundred fifty thousand. Somebody dropped one million. A lady dropped one million and so on. Instead of the police people to give the guy the fifty, the many fifty thousand and so on, they they took the fifty thousand and they shared it among themselves. So I don't. I I, I know that those people have problems. I know that those things is not ordinary, sincerely speaking. I don't see police issue as corruption. I think it's, it's demonic. 
I've seen them. I've, I've, I've gone to see what they are doing and so on. Though, no, what does, from my experience, what does in the prison, they are more corrupt than police. I've seen all these things. I know it's not ordinary. So taking cases like that to the police and so on, I don't know. I think the best is to look for uh, human, uh, what do you call it, a civil society and so on. And legally, they take it up. I think uh, in, in, in legal system, in judicial system, there is some little sanity in that place. I think in little sanity and so on. The person is charged in that order. But when they withdraw the case, that's the end of the case. When the case is withdrawn, there's nothing anybody can do. The, 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 the charges are not charged, are not, uh, are not pressed against anybody. Then the case is withdrawn and everybody goes home. And everybody is assuaged and so on. The only thing that I does not repeat itself. All right. Let me see another one. Is there a role for CIPM? I think I, I'm seeing that. Hey, sorry. Is there any role that CIPM or NECA can intervene in case of workplace bullying and harassment and so on? Well, I've had to go there to CIPM myself to join us to do some issues that relate to this and so on. I think maybe they are busy with so many things and so on. But as a matter of reality, we are going to take it up at the Association of Corporate Governance. We can't just continue to act as if nothing is happening. And nobody wants to take care of it. Then we have to take care of it. For people to try on, it takes good men to keep quiet. So we have to do something about it. And everywhere we say, any, anywhere in the country that things like that happen and so on, we want to go there. We want to ensure that we, we press charges, we do something that we, we basically act as a deterrent to other people. There is a professor that is in the prison now because of harassing a particular girl in OAUP. That Mr. Professor, he, he has very, he's a high ranking man in the religious body. It is something that is totally absurd totally embarrassing very shameful and so on so we can't we can't even talk about it so but we are going to work about on it i've gone to serap we want, we want to do some things and so on we cannot sit down like this i've gone to some professional body but they don't have the time so we have to do the right thing we have to do something about it so hello dr olufemi can you share your organization's name and, and contact so we can have in hand in case we need to reach out for help on such cases. Okay, no problem. My number is here. This is my number. It's on the yes. My number is there. It's yeah, of course, very well. I think somebody has responded to that. So what is? I'm trying to see if there are other questions so that we can be able to. Okay, maybe some people have written other ones. No sound. All right. Open door policy. We have talked about all these things. Ex accepting there is another issue that you want us to look at. I've talked about it. I've said that open door policy, it's normal in corporate governance environment. There is not, no secrecy. Everything should be open. Transparency is in, is, in, is, in, is in the name of the game. It's very, very important. Nothing is secret anymore. You can't, you can't come to the public office and you say you want to be in secret. It's not possible. You know, we have a proverb in our place that Mass play that has gone out is no more something that I cannot see again. So I have, have seen it, so it, 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 it's out already. So everything is open. Everything is transparent. There has to be accountability. You say one Mr. HR is the bully him or herself. There has to be accountability. We talk about accountability. It must be accountable to somebody. It is very, very important. If it's not accountable, accountable to his MD or to an MD, then people should hold him accountable. Everybody should be held accountable. The president of Nigeria should be held accountable. Nobody can afford or nobody can do whatever he wants to do. Everybody should be made to be accountable to one body or the other. That is a civil society. That is the right society. That is a civilized environment. Everybody must be accountable. You cannot be the man alone that will mobilize uh, uh, students for law school. No, there, there has to be checks and there has to be balance everywhere. Everybody must be checked. Every, there has to be accountability everywhere. The president of Nigeria should be accountable to the people. The, uh, the, the House of Representatives, the Senate in Nigeria must be accountable to the people. 
everybody must be held accountable. Now, uh, during the week, some people are asking me that, okay, you want to call back a, a senator and so on. What is the process? This is the process. Only that we didn't want to go about it. It's just to have a referendum. It's to ensure that you, you have people that sign that, okay, how many people voted for the man? If you have half, the, half of the people, you call the man back. That has to be accountability. And that is what we want to raise to the, to the, to the fore so that people be aware that nobody can do whatever he likes. Everybody must be accountable. Mr. MD must be accountable. He cannot just do whatever he likes. Everybody must be accountable to a particular body. That is corporate governance. Yes, indeed. Thank you yes, so much, sir. <laughs> Our time is far spent. Andrew, Absolutely. one minute or less. You have something to say? One minute or less? Uh, I'll go okay, quickly. Okay. So, uh, I was going to add to something that Doctor mentioned earlier that um, when he answered the question that if the organization does not press charges, I think that ends the case. I just want to add from organization point that um, it does not end the case most times because that is from the uh, uh, um, civil perspective. But from organization perspective, they can still apply the policy of the organization that says if you violate such policy or if you do X, Y, Z, this is the punishment for it. So they can still apply that in-house, even if they are not pursuing the civil part of it. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. On behalf, on behalf of everyone who has joined this call tonight, we would like to sincerely, respectfully thank Dr. Olufemi Mosaku Johnson for the last two hours. He has been highly informative, exciting, and energizing. God bless you. We celebrate you. And we look forward to having you soonest on this platform once again. I'm going to unmute everyone. Let's just say thank you. Let's just say thank you to Dr. Tonight for being generous with his wisdom, knowledge, and time. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you so thank much. You, we appreciate thank you. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Thank you, Doctor.